First of all, thank you for all of your comments, likes and attention for my recent Castlevania reviews. Due to your attention, I also started playing Order of Ecclesia and will be taking a look at Dawn of Sorrow soon. By saying soon, I mean that I will take my time preparing content about these games, since the channel is already quite packed with our dear vampire hunters. But for now, it's time to conclude Castlevania Advance Collection with its last game, Castlevania Dracula X or also known as Vampire's Kiss for SNES. Keep in mind that I will be reviewing the SNES version of Dracula X, meaning this won't be a review for Rondo of Blood, which is the first and the original version or Dracula X Chronicles, which is the PSP remake and also my favorite. I don't know if I would ever find strength, courage or energy to play Rondo of Blood once again, but I'll keep in mind if you guys are curious about it. Also, be sure to subscribe and follow me on Twitter for more reviews. You will find me forming my own tier lists for different series and genres, which are definitely open for any discussion and I am also waiting for your any recommendations. Launched in 1995 for SNES, Castlevania Dracula X presents us a new Belmont member, Richter Belmont. Die, monster! You don't belong in this world! who can also be seen by the prologue of Symphony of the Night. Exact relationship to just a Belmont of Harmony of Dissonance is unknown, but Richter might be the grandson of just a Belmont, taking considered the Rondo of Blood's timeline of 1797. Since it is a SNES game and prior to any GBA title and also to Symphony of the Night, Dracula X's main gameplay style and the level progress is similar to classic SNES titles, meaning the gameplay is indeed arcade-like. Whole game takes about 3 hours if a player knows what to do, or around 5 hours with trials and errors, especially by the death and Dracula boss fights. As the basic Castlevania gameplay shows itself, meaning Richter walks, jumps and sends his whip forward to any enemy or candles to collect hearts, so that he can use his sub weapons such as axes, knives, holy water and other tools. Although lots of Castlevania fans love Rondo of Blood, I think I would prefer Dracula X since it provides more fair gameplay and progress, where Rondo of Blood can be summarized as better visuals, music, longer gameplay but with a hardcore challenge. Some people find Rondo of Blood easier than Dracula X but I'm quite the opposite here. Maybe the reason is that I finished Rondo of Blood last year on a stream and got used to its gameplay mechanic and flow but this time I enjoyed SNS graphics, music and the level design much more. I'm not joking here, I still remember that bridge session of Rondo of Blood where the each part of bridge collapses and bats hit Richter, causing him to knock back and stops his movement animation, causing us to fall to our demise. Rondo of Blood left me with a PTSD, trust me. I'm not saying that it's a bad Castlevania experience, but maybe playing it on a live Twitch stream was the worst idea that I ever had, and that memories still haunt me. As you might guess, Dracula X vs Rondo of Blood is a battle that is continuing for ages between the fans. But to be frank, there is no better version but it's about the taste you like to have I believe. Well they both have Richter, they both have Dracula and they both present two damsels in distress, Richter's girlfriend Annette and her sister Maria. Dracula X has 7 stages that can branch due to path Richter either chooses or fails to reach. Due to path you choose and sub weapon key you pick, Richter can save Maria and Annette within the castle or just head to Dracula's chamber. Saving Annette and Maria can be seen as the best ending, but the ending itself does not have the impact that other Castlevania titles have. Starting from Burning Village to Depths of the Underground Reservoir, Mines and Clock Tower, Richter fights against the usual demon summoned by Dracula. If you played other Castlevania titles before, you wouldn't be surprised. From Medusa heads to Extrovers, Javelin knights to skeletons, you whip these enemies, move from platform to platform until you reach the boss. Each stage having a different challenging boss and Clock Tower's boss changes depending on if you rescue Annette or just leave her behind. Rescuing Annette brings death as a boss fight, probably the hardest boss fight of Dracula X. Dracula itself has a more unfair kind of fight, but death itself means more of a challenge and sharp reflexes. Until that boss fight, all of the remaining challenges depending on how much you know the abilities of bosses, meaning it's presenting a fair challenge. But when it comes to death and Dracula itself, you may need the luck on your side. Also be sure to keep your distance from the bosses, as the contact damage wrecks Richter, probably minimizing your chance to defeat the boss. Sometimes I really don't get how touching Dracula's sweet abs cause more damage than get the hit by his fireballs. <laughs> Thank you.
Seven stages also mean that Dracula X is a side-scrolling platformer rather than Metroidvania. You don't backtrack or save within a specific location of the castle, but you just move forward with an unwavering will of Richter's. Besides his whip, you can use your sub-weapons with the hearts you collect when you break a candle or any item and do special attacks of that sub-weapon by using a big amount of hearts. I would recommend using the special attacks mostly by boss fights, as they can get quite challenging from time to time. One gameplay mechanic that will let you jump high and also dodge incoming attacks is Richter's backflip. It is quite useful but also hard to master kind of a move. You can reach to high areas with this movement, dodge even bosses but also it can be quite dangerous to use from time to time. But then again after playing the dark... DARK? But then again after playing the Dracula X Chronicles, the PSP remake of Dracula X and the Rondo of Blood, I don't think I can place both Rondo of Blood or Dracula X upon high rank within my list. Even though I like Richter from his Symphony of the Night design to first more classic Belmont design, from music to background design, I always found his experience quite challenging and unfair at some point. Even by bosses or some platforming sequences, reflexes, timing and luck become so important that if one of them is not enough, then you would fail. Because of all of these things and the superior remake Dracula X Chronicles, I place Dracula X also known as Vampire's Kiss upon C+. One step below the circle of the moon. But as I mentioned before, I'll be playing Rondo of Blood and Dracula X Chronicles and the classic NES Castlevania series once again and do adjustments to my tier list if needed. So don't think that these games will stay on their rank forever. And with Dracula X, whole Castlevania Advance Collection comes to a conclusion. With 3 Metroidvania and 1 classic platforming Castlevania experience, Castlevania Advance Collection is once again recommended and aggressively recommended if you are interested in Castlevania IP. As I mentioned before, probably my next guest will be Order of Ecclesia and the most charming Castlevania protagonist next to Alucard, Shanoa and her quest. And thank you once again for your comments, I really appreciate it and don't forget to subscribe for more.